ABC 6 News at Noon. Good afternoon, everybody. Thanks for joining us. It is Marathon Monday. Tens of thousands of runners on the route as we speak, making that 26.2 mile trek into Boston where thousands of fans wait to cheer them on. Good morning, Providence anchor Casey Kantz is live in the city. You can just feel the excitement of the return of an April race day. Casey. Boy, it is raucous. It is really raucous, Doreen. And uh, the first runners departed from Hopkinton a little after nine this morning. The last runners departed about 45 minutes ago. And as you can hear from the cheers, some of those first runners are crossing the finish line here at Boyles 2 Street in Boston as we speak. Close to 30,000 athletes have either crossed the finish line here at Boylston Street or are still out navigating the 26.2 mile course. 120 countries in all 50 states represented here today. And for Rhode Islanders, here's a name for you. Remember the name Bobby Doyle, one of the greatest to ever do it, ran this race four times. And what a joy for us this morning to catch some of the race today with some of Bobby's family, including his son, Connor, from Woonsocket, who says his dad still to this day holds the best Ocean State time of the 126 years of this Boston Marathon. He actually has Rhode Island's marathon record at 2.14.03. That was back in 1979. Uh, he was seventh that day. So that was his favorite race. Um, he had passed away in 07, and I've been at the finish line every year since. The only one I've missed uh, was this past fall. I had to work, um, but I've been to every Patriots Day since 07. So it's kind of a a tradition that I have with me, some of my siblings and stuff like that. Whenever we can make it, we make it up. And the tradition is back. I mean, we're back on Patriots Day for the first time in three years. Yeah, absolutely. It's great to be back here. I was so excited to come back here. Oh, it's great. I think it's it's something we've been waiting for for over two years now. Um, it's nice to have a great day. Like Poppy says, it's, it's our freaking city. And, you know, I think it's back and we're just so excited to to be here. This is one of my favorite days of the year, and I think a lot of people from Boston can say the same thing. And you can really feel it, too. And, you know, it's a picture-perfect day. It's just beautiful. The sun is shining, but I asked Connor uh, if his dad would prefer this kind of weather, and he said no. He said, he said my dad would actually prefer the rain or even the snow. He said he had a famous quote, you can't teach guts, and they still actually run the Bobby Doyle Summer Classic in Narragansett every summer. That's coming up this summer again in August. We're live at the Boston Marathon 2022. I'm Casey Kantz for ABC6 News. Doreen, back to you. All right, Casey, thanks. You can feel the excitement all the way down here. There is always a concern, though, with the crowds. And after the marathon bombing in 2013, about safety and security, officials working around the clock, checking out any alerts. ABC6 News reporter Dominique Turner is live in the newsroom with more on this. Dominique. Doreen, safety and security at the top of organizers' minds Monday for the 126th running of the Boston Marathon. Nearly 30,000 runners taking part in the 26.2-mile race. This comes less than one week since the attack on a Brooklyn subway, striking fear and concern in many. Public safety officials saying Monday after the shooting on a subway in Brooklyn and the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing, safety is top priority for the first full-scale Boston Marathon since 2019. State, federal, and local law enforcement saying they haven't received any threats, reassuring the public of their safety. But neither the FBI or any other United States government agency at this time is aware of any specific or credible threats targeting this year's race. However, as we all know, that could change in a heartbeat. FBI teams will be integrated throughout the marathon route, including highly trained units like bomb technicians, evidence response, and SWAT teams on standby. We have built an extremely robust security and response plan, so you can rest assured that you can enjoy the day with safety. Law enforcement urging runners and spectators, if they see something, say something. Because history has shown during most mass casualty events that do occur that after the fact people come forward such as friends parents teachers classmates and they say that they had noticed a change in someone massachusetts state police urging spectators and fans to go to their website to see what they can and cannot bring to the race things banned include backpacks large coolers and drones for now live in the newsroom i'm dominique turner abc6 news all right dom um, thank you and now to the weather as we take a live look outside right now with our sky cam it is a great day for the runners or cooler temperatures lots of sunshine more april like than last week right chelsea yeah. 
We had such warm temperatures across the area last week. Today, we have really bright conditions outside. The temperatures are much cooler this afternoon compared to our afternoons almost all last week. We're sitting in the low 50s right now. Luckily, winds are calm. Temperatures across most of the area in that low to mid 50s range. A few degrees cooler at the immediate coastline. 40s in Newport and Westerly right now, hovering close to 50 degrees. So a little bit cooler than average. That average high is now about 60 degrees. We end up topping out in the mid to upper 50s range this afternoon. A few degrees warmer than yesterday, especially especially for our inland spots. Yesterday afternoon, we had a lot of clouds and some grapple coming down in many locations. Today, though, we have sunshine and slightly warmer conditions. That sunshine is with us for now. You're going to see clouds increasing as the afternoon progresses. Much wider view shows you rain and snow down to our south and west. We're going to see that rain get here overnight, mainly after midnight. We will start to see those clouds thickening up over the course of the afternoon. It's not until after midnight that the heavy rain starts to move in. For a few hours, we have some torrential rain and really gusty winds. I'll have much more in your full forecast in just a few minutes. Joy? Chelsea, thank you. And a man with a record of breaking and entering arrested in Providence. Providence Police tell ABC6, 48-year-old Harry Wheeler was caught on a ring camera stealing from a home on Lorraine Avenue on the east side. Police say the footage showed Wheeler stealing a bike from a garage back on April 5th. He was then caught on camera in another robbery attempt at the same house eight days later. No word on any court appearance yet for Wheeler. Warwick police are asking for your help in finding a suspect involved in a hit and run last Tuesday. Police say the crash happened near the intersection of Centerville and Hardig Roads. The suspect was driving an easily identifiable prime gray colored sedan. It has tinted windows and doesn't have license plates. Police believe the vehicle would likely have severe damage in the front. Several animals were killed in a barn fire in Warren late Saturday night. Firefighters responded to Barton Avenue around 1130. Crews had to open a gate for the animals, but some of them didn't make it out. Firefighters were able to stop the fire from spreading to the nearby home. The cause is still under investigation. An entire terminal at Logan Airport cleared out because of a suspicious item in someone's luggage Sunday afternoon. Massachusetts State Police officials say they were alerted by TSA agents around 4 o'clock about the suspicious item during a screening. Officials called in the bomb squad to check it out. Troopers discovered it was just a gaming console that was in bad condition from old age or damage. The Red Sox roster will be missing a few players when the team takes on the Toronto Blue Jays in Canada this week. Manager Alex Cora says there are multiple players who aren't vaccinated. Canada requires people have a second dose of the COVID vaccine before entering the country. Starting pitcher Tanner Huck told the Boston Globe he isn't vaccinated and will not be pitching during the series against the Blue Jays. Players who miss over the vaccine will not be paid for MLB rules. And the Boston Celtics take game one in the first round of the playoffs against the Brooklyn Nets. Jason Tatum made a layup at the buzzer to give the Seas the dramatic victory. 115 to 114. Game two is 7 p.m. Wednesday, again from the Garden. There is still much more to come here on ABC6 News at noon. A chilling ultimatum in Ukraine. Soldiers told by Russians to surrender or die. We'll have the latest. Plus, Uncle Sam is waiting for you. The tax deadline is tonight. What to do if you haven't filed yet? And later, a White House tradition returns. Details on the annual Easter egg roll on the South Lawn.
Now to the war in Ukraine and the number of injured and killed in Ukraine continues to rise after a weekend of Russian bombing across the war-torn country. ABC's Justin Finch has the latest. As Russia's war on Ukraine approaches its second month, much of the strategic city of Mariupol lies in ruins. Vladimir Putin's force is appearing closer than ever to claiming the city as some 2,500 Ukrainian troops holed up in a steel factory complex are seeing supplies and ammo dwindle. Ukraine's prime minister on this week saying they will never give up. The city still is not fallen. There is still our uh, military forces, our soldiers, so they will fight till the end. In Irpin, rows of graves of dead civilians now uncovered, families gathering to grieve and bury loved ones. Sunday, Russian shelling of apartment buildings in Kharkiv killed at least five and left more than a dozen hurt. To the west, in Lviv, new reports of at least seven killed and as many as 11 injured, including at least one child. Many of Ukraine's injured are children. Pieces of shrapnel, bullets, all of it, they say, taken out of children that they're treating at this hospital. And what the doctors and the legal experts here are telling me is that this proves that Russia is not just hitting military installations. Any day now, officials expect Russia's major escalation in the east to begin. That anticipation comes after the U.S. began shipping off $800 million in high-powered weapons and military aid last week. The major focus now for Ukrainian forces is holding Mariupol. If Russia gains control there, its military gains the land advantage of having land access to Crimea and also the potential to have a staging point to launch even more attacks in the near future. I'm Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Well, still to come, no day like today. It is the deadline for most to file taxes, but we've got some tips for all you procrastinators out there when we come back. Today is tax day. ABC's Rena Roy has what you need to know if you've waited until the last minute to file. Still need more time or don't have the money to pay what you owe the IRS. Today is tax day, and if you won't be submitting your tax return by midnight, you'll need to file for an extension. They can actually file an extension online for free using the IRS free file through form 4868. This will give you until October 17th to get paperwork in. But remember that an extension to file is not an extension to pay. The IRS expects you to pay your tax liability by the April 18th filing deadline. If you owe money, you'll have to estimate your tax liability and make a payment. If you can't pay right now, don't panic. The taxpayer's financial situation is very, very complicated at this time. They don't have money to pay this. 
they should definitely contact the IRS and arrange for a payment plan so they can pay in installments. You can do that a couple of different ways. Of course, you can pick up the phone and contact them, but we know contacting the IRS could be very challenging at this time. So another thing that you can do is actually create an online account and you create your own payment arrangement. If you filed already and you're expecting a refund, it's typically going to take about 21 days if you file electronically to receive your refund. But of course, that's only if you filed electronically. If you did choose to file a paper tax return, it is going to take a couple of weeks, could be months before you receive your refund. In addition to e-filing, submitting an error-free tax return and setting up direct deposit will get you your refund the quickest. Rena Roy, ABC News. And now, your ABC6 Storm Tracker weather with meteorologist Chelsea Priest. Well, it's a little bit cooler outside today, but it is beautiful outside today. View over Block Island shows you perfect sunshine, and it's not too, too breezy just yet. That is going to be changing overnight. We have some very gusty winds that are in the forecast, along with some torrential rain, but enjoy the sunshine while we have it right now. Low to mid-50s at the moment, 52 in Providence, upper 40s for Block Island, for Newport, for Westerly, low 50s in New Bedford, Falmouth at 50 degrees, 49 up in Boston. Typically this time of year, we make it to about 60 degrees. So we are sitting below average right now. We are going to see those temperatures topping out mainly in the mid to upper 50s range later today. Still cooler than average, definitely cooler than last week, uh, but more seasonable outside. That breeze is now just starting to pick up for our coastal locations about 10 to 15 miles per hour with a few gusts that are going to start to develop as we head through the afternoon. But again, it's overnight. The really gusty winds start to move in. Highs today make it into the mid 50s range, a little bit warmer than where we're at right now. And we hover around average in the coming days. Again, that average high 60 degrees. We should stay in the upper 50s to about 60 degree range. We have one warm day on the seven day forecast. Looks like a really nice day on Friday with temperatures in the mid to upper 60s. And we should hover in that low 60s range as we head into the weekend. So fairly seasonable temperatures for this seven day forecast. Last week, obviously, we looked at almost an entire seven day of above average temperatures. Satellite radar image right now is dry and quiet. We still have high pressure in control, but you can see the leading edge of some clouds inching closer to us and you're going to start to see some clouds increasing over the course of the afternoon all ahead of this storm system, which will eventually bring some really heavy rain and gusty winds to us here in southern New England. So let's go through things hour by hour on what to expect timeline wise, because again, and Similar to last week, a lot of the rain is coming in the overnight hours. That being said, there may be some lingering impacts into tomorrow morning. So we're dry but overcast through 9, 10, 11 o'clock. Shortly after midnight, heavy rain starts to move in. This is 3 a.m. That's some really heavy, widespread, kind of torrential rain falling. And that happens for a good few hours. You may hear it overnight. This is when we have our very gusty winds as well. Now by 7 a.m., as that morning commute starts to pick up a bit, we start to dry out. That being said, we've had a few hours of some very heavy rain falling. So there'll be puddles on the roads, some ponding on the roads. All those spots that are typically prone to dealing with some big puddles will likely be dealing with that for the morning commute tomorrow. From there, we get into a little bit of sun into the afternoon, but it stays breezy, even breezy into Wednesday as we continue to see mainly sunny conditions. So in terms of rainfall, an inch to an inch and a half, and that comes all at once in the overnight hours from again shortly after midnight winding things down by 7 a.m. So a lot of rain falling over a brief amount of time and these gusty winds. This is 9 o'clock 25 to 35 mile per hour wind gusts but overnight 3 a.m. gusts coming in over 50 miles per hour for the Cape for the islands farther inland. Those gusts aren't quite as high, but it's a windy night for all of us and it's windy through tomorrow morning before we start to see those winds backing down. There's a wind advisory that begins at 1 a.m. and lasts until 10 a.m. tomorrow morning for coastal locations into southeastern mass up into Boston, but a high wind warning for the Cape and the islands where those gusts will be coming in over 50 miles per hour. So again, you'll likely hear the really heavy rain and the gusty winds overnight lingering into early tomorrow morning. We dry out quickly. We clear out into the afternoon. It stays windy tomorrow or sunny and seasonable on Wednesday. Day, staying around 60 degrees for Thursday as well. Doreen? Hi, Chelsea. Thank you. Well, they are still celebrating Easter in Washington. President Biden hosted his first White House Easter egg roll this morning. The annual event hasn't been held since 2019 due to the pandemic. The theme for the 142nd White House Easter egg roll is education, featuring activities geared toward learning. Well, next at noon, why shareholders at Tesla are looking to silence CEO Elon Musk and the future of sports jerseys. You can scan them to learn more about the players.
In consumer news, some good news at the pump. Gas prices are down in Rhode Island another two cents. The average is now four dollars even per gallon. That is 26 cents lower than a month ago. The average in Massachusetts is 407. ABC6 wants to help you pay less at the pump. You can find the lowest gas prices in your area on our Southern New England gas tracker. Just head to our website, abc6.com. You can find it under the community tab. Well, Elon Musk versus Tesla shareholders. As the billionaire fights to take over Twitter, he's now in a legal battle against his own shareholders at Tesla. They've now asked a judge to force Musk to stop commenting about their case, which stems from his tweets back in 2018 about taking Tesla private. The shareholders are suing for alleged securities fraud. A possible sign of the future in sports. Check out the jerseys worn by the University of Central Florida's football team during their spring game. Unique QR codes replace numbers on their backs and fans can scan the codes to learn more about the players. Well, coming up, no kissing strangers. The directive from a college in Boston ahead of Marathon Monday. Plus, Chelsea has another look at your afternoon forecast right after this. Well, finally this afternoon, COVID keeping one tradition at the Boston Marathon away. And that is Wellesley College urging students to not kiss the runners mm -hmm. this year. The students create a scream tunnel near campus. It's about the halfway point of the race. And the all-female student body is known to cheer the runners on with encouraging signs, high fives, and maybe a, a kiss or a sweaty <laughs> smooch, Chels. So they're telling that. them all, don't do it. Right? Seriously. <laughs> COVID's still a thing. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> I like that the school had to issue that reminder. I know, right? right? I yeah. don't think many of us are running around. <laughs> not not in these times. Yeah. Yeah, let's, yeah, let's avoid that. It's a nice day, though. It's cooler, mm -hmm. uh, but it's sunny outside. You'll get increasing clouds to the afternoon and overnight after midnight. Heavy rain moves in for a good few hours there. We're talking about an inch to an inch and a half. I think it dries out before the morning commute tomorrow, but there'll be some big puddles out there, some ponding on the roadways. It'll also stay really windy overnight, especially the farther south and east you go. And we stay windy as we dry out and clear out tomorrow, but most of the week we have seasonable temperatures and relatively dry conditions after the downpour of rain that we have overnight. Yeah, at least it's putting it off until after sure. the marathon runners hopefully cross yeah, the line tonight. Not so, until yeah. after midnight. Yeah. So. All right, Charles, yeah. thank you. And thank you for joining us for the news at noon. The news continues first and four. Have a great day, everybody.